And now, your go-to source for year-round fantasy hockey advice, DFS, and betting coverage. This is NHL Fantasy on Ice, presented by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. Brought to you by our good friends over at Skip. It's time for another episode of NHL Fantasy on Ice. Week 15, Waiver Wire Edition. Nick Alberga and Pete Jensen with you. No Anna Dua today. She'll be back next episode. What's going on, Pete? What's up, Nick? Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. And we're going to need to deliver here with some of these pickups because so many guys around the league are banged up right now. Ovechkin, Shifley, unfortunately, Nachuskin's in the player assistance program. So we're going to have to look elsewhere for the Colorado Avalanche in his absence. But great to be with you, man. Yeah, you as well. I was going to say this is like a pseudo uh, mailbag type waiver wire edition. We got all encompassing on this one because, again, a lot of questions this week, Pete. Uh, It's getting closer and closer before you know it to the All-Star break. Then you have the fantasy playoffs, so lots to cover. And and obviously, you guys put the list out on Monday in terms of the waiver wire list, but uh, injury replacements massive this week, right? Right, and I wanted to touch on the Philadelphia Flyers because we went so heavy on Drysdale, but it's not Mm -hmm. just Drysdale why this team is playing well. They've been one of the biggest surprises in the entire league this season. I think Vancouver is probably the biggest surprise fantasy and reality overall. But after that, it's got to be the Flyers. And you could even look to their backup goalie, right, Samuel Ayrson. I mean, he's been at times playing more often than Carter Hart. Hart has been banged up at different times, has been sick. You know, he's been the backup for different reasons. And Torts, you know, is always that wild card. But this kid is rookie eligible. He's playing really well right now. Oh, fantastic. I know we're going to give Marc-Andre Fleury his flowers on this podcast Mm -hmm. today. But John Tortorella getting his flowers from me. He's done an unbelievable job. I tell you, I had to shower three times after watching that Owen Tippett goal on Monday. That that was disgusting, man. They, like, Torts has the Flyers going right now. Like they're they're locked they're locked in defensively. Like Pete, if I were to tell you in the off season that Sam Harrison would be a guy you go after in terms of the waiver wire, Joel Farabee is on the list this week. Like there's so many different fantasy options on this team. It just shows you year to year how quickly things can change in the fantasy world, right? Right. I don't think I've been this excited about the Philadelphia You're Flyers jacked. since 2012 when they or whatever that year was when they beat the Penguins in the playoffs, you know, something like that, where they were absolutely on fire those days. I mean, someone actually hit us up in the comments on Instagram and said uh, something to the effect of, I haven't heard Pete Jensen say anything good about the Flyers, and now he's <laughs> pumping their tires left and right with Drysdale and all these different guys. You know I've been a big Owen Tippett fan all season long, and you know that I was really excited, as I know you were, Nick, too, when yeah. Couturier came back from injury and was looking like his old self. So I have been on the Flyers since early on in the regular season when they started to flash the surprise here. Public enemy number one, Philadelphia Cutter Goche. Number two, it's Pete Jensen, quite clear on that. Uh, Joel Farabee's on the list this week, Pete. 15 points, four goals, 11 assists in the past 15 games. But any exposure to anything in Philadelphia we're all about right now, right? Yeah, definitely. And I like the look with uh, Drysdale playing on the top pair. I know he was ill the last game, but uh, he was playing top pair with Travis Sanheim, and that works toward the staying power of Travis Sanheim. So that's really good stuff as well. And you know, I think the one guy that we did take seriously coming into this year was Konechny, yeah. uh, just because of how good he's been in recent years, even when that team was a complete dumpster fire. Now they're they're looking really good in the standings. And, you know, if you compare them to some of these other teams that have also been surprises, the Capitals, the Islanders from that Metro division, like it's not even close right now, I would side with Philly right now, I, I would even side with them over the Penguins. So I guess if you're looking for the third spot in the Metro, uh, it's Phillies to lose right now. And that's why uh, by the week I become more worried for the New Jersey Devils. It just seems like that type of year. They got to start winning some hockey games right now. Uh, a nice mm-hmm. little tie into Dave Haxtell used to coach the Flyers. Another name on this list, Jaden Schwartz with the Seattle Kraken. You want to talk about teams that are red hot right now. Haxtell has that team playing and Again, the injuries started to mount there, too. Matty Benier is placed on IR, but Jaden Schwartz is a guy who started to cook as of late, eh? Schwartz is another one of those guys that just does his damage under the radar when he's yeah. healthy. And Bjorkstrand, same thing. I guess Bjorkstrand's going to the All-Star game, right? Uh, a little well-deserved recognition for mm-hmm. him. He's just been totally underrated his whole career, dating back to his Columbus days. And then Eli Tolvanen as well. Like 
has been chipping in, you know, two out of every three games lately, I think, which is a, a good ratio there. But, you know, combine all those different guys, and that's why they can survive different in- injury absences at different times. I am worried, though, if uh, Vince Dunn is anything serious, because that could be uh, a backbreaker for them. Good on Oliver Bjorkstrand. He's had a fantastic season, and we're uh, looking forward to seeing him in Toronto for All-Star Week and com- coming up in a couple weeks' time here, Pete. And looking around the league at some other waiver wire names, I know that the Ducks are dealing with injuries since we last talked with Zegris and Minchukov both out six plus weeks. That's no good. They traded away Drysdale. So how competitive are they going to be right now? Uh, Very. They had a nice win against the Florida Panthers come from behind fashion. Troy Terry's back from injury. Leo Carlson's back from injury. Both of those players are guys, even for a non-contending team, that I would pick up without hesitation. What do you think? I am uh, back in as well on Frank Vitrano. I know we were discussing off air a couple weeks ago. I had to drop the guy. He hadn't picked up Mm -hmm. a point in like 11 games. He's starting to cook again. He's starting to taunt the crowd in in, in, uh, Florida now too. Alex (laughs) Kalorn in the mix there still owns the Florida Panthers. So I think uh, from a fantasy point of view, we're back in on the Anaheim Ducks, but I think we're just left wondering what could have been for that team after that impressive start. Lucas Dostal looks like the real deal. Maybe a lot of changes between now and the trade deadline, but certainly some options to look at there. Mason Marchman, we just talked about Florida, uh, the, the the Dallas Stars, the second line you want to ta- tap into that. They're a team, Pete, where I wonder if they go on a monster run here in the second half. I just have that feel with them for some reason. Yeah, they can definitely do it with Ottinger back now. I mean, yeah. hopefully Haskinen's not out too long. I uh, want to get to some defensemen at some point in the show because yeah. I feel like there are a bunch of guys from, you know, Dougie Hamilton's been out for a while. I haven't heard a peep about Shea Theodore in a while. Same thing with um, Sergachev, right? Like a lot of these different guys and Haskinen. I mean, those are four of your top 20 fantasy defensemen, maybe even four of the top 15 based on either performance or pedigree coming into the season. So uh, anybody you're looking at on defense, I know uh, Perbix has been pretty good for for Tampa of late, but it's been pretty sparing right now on D. That's exactly it. There's just not much I want to touch, uh, at least like on a weekly basis, maybe here and there in terms of games. But uh, I mean, other than that, Thomas Harley comes to mind with Dallas, but he's not really picking up the points. Like I love Drysdale on this list this week because I think he's got the most potential of Mm -hmm. anybody you're really going to find in the waiver wire right now. And I think that's the way you need to play it if you're a fantasy manager. I know it stinks to lose a defenseman like that and automatically you want to look at the in-house replacement. But after that, I, I think it's trial and error, Pete. It has to be that way this time of year in terms of D and fantasy hockey. And I, I would look at, I think, uh, Sam Girard. He's been picking up some assists lately. Um, some guys are banged up. We mentioned it on one of the previous shows, Bowen Byram. Right, Manson's been a little banged up since we last talked. So he's uh, you know got seven assists in 23 games. Hasn't really gotten going full-fledged into the Girard we saw a few years ago. But he's picking up the pace a little bit lately. And Colorado is a big topic. We mentioned it yeah. off the top with Nachuskin out. Who do you see stepping up in his absence? Are you, you know, stashing a, a Lekin in, hoping he comes back soon? Are you going all in on Jonathan Druin? I think that's the easy answer. I also like Ross Colton a lot yeah. for category coverage. Yeah, so Lekinen's very close. In fact, he could play, I think, on Tuesday against Ottawa. We'll see if that happens. But he's it's very huge. close. And, and and if he comes back, I think you have to add him. But I think the easier replacement is Jonathan Drouin, who's on that top line. He's on PP1, was getting booed like crazy in Montreal, picked up an apple on Monday. I was all over that in terms of a point prop, so that was great to see. But I think he's the easy solution. The other guy you mentioned as well, Ross Colton, now elevated to PP1. He's on the second line. Like He's in a favorable spot to produce a bit. But uh, if I had a pecking order, Pete, it would be Drouin 1, then Ross Colton 2. How about you? Yeah, I would. I think I would be like top fifteen in the league in power play points if I was on that power play Crazy, one. Man. And uh, of course, we saw Sheldon Keith giving high praise to the Avalanche and what they've been doing so far this year. Um, what's your What's your pulse right now on on what's going on with the Leafs? Because I know that um, you know we haven't heard that encouraging injury yeah. news yet on Joseph Wall and Martin Jones has completely fallen back down to earth since we last talked. I know you're waiting for uh, Ryan Reeves to come back from injury, right? It's been about uh, over a month. I can't can't locate the guy. But uh, I think that was a bit tongue-in-cheek, by the way. I think that was an indirect shot at the big boys of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, Keith just uh, gusting over the big boys in Colorado. So here's my play of the day, guys. It's an absolute sledgehammer. Sledgehammer to the Toronto Maple Leafs on Tuesday night against the Edmonton Oilers. Plus money. 
It's free money. This is what the Maple <laughs> Leafs do. The entire hockey world is talking about them. Bobby's going oh, to his boy. phone right now. I got some coin on this team tonight because this is what they do. <laughs> Everybody in the hockey world is counting the Leafs out. I saw an article before I came on this podcast. Are they even good enough to sell at the trade deadline or to buy at the trade deadline? Like, give me a break. <laughs> I get worried anytime anyone tosses out the two words. It's big word. Free money. There's yeah. no such thing in the NHL okay. as free money. And we need to, because <laughs> well, we're Pittsburgh the league. Pittsburgh was two weeks if, ago. But. If Columbus <laughs> yes. beats uh, Vancouver, there's no such thing as free money. Right? Bet responsibly, please. Bet yes, responsibly. Yes. But I do like the spot. I do. Of course, me and Pete both know what you're talking about with the Maple Leafs and, yeah. and just how they operate. So, yes, I would like them at plus money as well. Thank you for clarifying that. There is no such thing as free money. Bet responsibly, my friends. But uh, that, that's a spot I do like, Pete. Uh, to answer your question, I think it's the Jekyll and Hyde we know as a Toronto Maple Leafs. There's, there's ups, there's downs. Um, and I do think this is a spot on this uh, Western Canadian trip. They got three or four and do uh, Alberta, of, of course, two, then Vancouver Saturday, then Seattle, where they flex their muscles a bit and show the hockey world that they're not just finished. Like they've lost three in a row. It feels like they've lost nine in a row here. So, uh, Looking forward to that. But uh, I think from a point production standpoint, too, I, I think the, the big boys are due. They didn't have a great weekend over Colorado and Detroit, respectively. I think the Leafs are a, a, a team that's going to be back and forth all season long. Like, this is what they do in the regular season, unfortunately, for them. Yeah. And back to the fantasy defensemen, I was just looking at some of the names. Uh, didn't want to leave anybody hanging there. I mean, no, Noah no. Hannafin has been really hot lately for the Calgary Flames. Pardon the pun there. Seth Jones <laughs> is back from injury as a favorable matchup against the Sharks on Tuesday. I mean, let's get the points coming in here, Seth Jones. Uh, I know Bedard's not there, but I've been hoping for better things for him this season. And um, had a big injury in that fantasy on ice league the other day for my team. Got a couple guys back, got Ottinger back, um, got Tuck back, and now Jack Eichel's out uh, for at yeah. least a little while, which is unfortunate for Vegas, right? Vegas is just had so many injuries, and Aiden Hill's still not back. It was uh, cool to see Brendan Brisson, of course, his dad's a power agent, uh, make his NHL debut for Vegas on Monday. I think internally you want to look at Chandler Stevenson. You know, mm -hmm. I was thinking back, remember Chandler Stevenson in like the first month of the season? He does this every year where people are like, my goodness, this is the year. Like, what a pickup from, from Washington, obviously. And he's cooled off considerably. Like, I think he's under 20% roster right now in Yahoo Standard Leagues. I would look at him, Nikola Waugh. I think anybody, obviously, with uh, center eligibility in terms of replacing Jack Eichel. And I found actually uh, three different guys on Calgary who can help right now. That team is scoring and winning. Igor Sharangovich has five goals in the last three. Nazem Kadri has six-game point streak. Jonathan Hubido, eight points in the last eight games. The other guy I'd bring up is Cole Perfetti. Uh, but it's weird how one team has like three different guys who are, are cooking right now, and they're playing really, really well. I would look at Calgary, Pete. Yeah, Calgary's got a lot of guys so far. I mean, Connor Zary is a you know, hidden gem. If you're looking at rookies or keeper in Dynasty, he has exceeded expectations this season. Markstrom has been pretty decent since coming back from injury uh, late December. So, you know, I don't see that team putting together a push to make the playoffs or anything no. crazy like that. But if you're talking about fantasy and value in the props market, uh, keep bringing it home. And hopefully Huberto you know, starts to turn his career back around again here. That's a that's a nice sign of a bounce back here. That was my long shot is Ryan Huska to win the Jack Adams. I think it was <laughs> 35 to one, not looking so excellent right now. But luckily for all of us, I had Rick Tockett too. So I'm feeling great about that. Uh, Mark Shifley injured once again with the Winnipeg Jets internally. And I see why they're doing this. They're not promoting Cole Perfetti to the top line. It's Adam Lowry. So it's Ehlers, Lowry and Velardi, Velardi excuse me, on the top line. I think of note too, Pete, with Winnipeg is uh, Kyle Connor is closing on a return too, as you mentioned last week, right? Yeah, they need that right now because I guess Ehlers is a little banged up as well. So, yeah. you know, that great story and being the best team in the NHL since early December. I mean, that it's not going to go out the window anytime soon, but it could come back down to reality at some point. So, yeah, Adam Lowry, he's he's their captain, right? I mean, yep. that's, uh, you know, that's a big shoes for him. To fill, but I think he can get it done fantasy wise, at least on a very short term stream uh, while some of these guys are out. This is the major league question for the both of you. Could you ride with the New York Islanders on Tuesday night after Cal Clutterbuck swore expletives? Yes, we love that. In his post game remarks after they were thoroughly spanked by the Minnesota Wild on Monday, 
or is uh you know c- can you get behind Ken Appleby is my question Pete can you do that I, I I'm not sold on this team uh they've been bringing a different brand of hockey this season they've taken us by surprise the offense has been pretty good but when the offense dries up they're not playing uh the type of you know they don't have the game plan to uh hang with some of these even middle of the road teams some nights they're yeah uh they've been disappointing lately uh the islanders and i don't see them winning that game despite what any anybody in-house thinks uh, might be going in the right direction i haven't seen much lately I think Winnipeg's due. I don't know if it's going to happen Tuesday. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked, by the way, if Sorokin goes in the back-to-back. I just don't think the Islanders are at a point where they can throw away games. Not to say anything about Ken Appleby, but uh, obviously sparingly used in the NHL. Let's go to another New York team, yeah. upstate. Uh, soft spot in the schedule for the Buffalo Sabres, who have been a lot of, you know, very disappointing, uh, a lot of turmoil they've with stunk. that team. Yes, they've, they've stuck with the coach. They. Uh, have only won consecutive games twice all season, I believe, but they are mm-hmm. pretty good since the start of January with four wins and two losses. They play the Blackhawks on Wednesday, the Lightning on Saturday, then they do the California road trip, which, you know, the Kings have been struggling. The Ducks are, are weak right now, uh, despite a couple of players doing well, and the Sharks are the worst team in the league. So, yep. you know, that's a nice little stretch here. Do you see Buffalo finally putting together a little streak here? Uh, They're about seven points back of a playoff spot. It's that time of year when Buffalo gets hot and they don't make the playoffs. This is what (laughs) they do. They're going to middle. They're going to middle out. They're not going to get a nice pick. This is what they do. I I, I do not believe in this team at all, but this is what they do. If you're going to ride them from a betting standpoint, Bob, I think now is the time. The Buffalo say like this is their time. I agree with what Nick's saying, but God, it's just the Senators (laughs) and the Sabres. Mind boggling stuff that we've seen all season long. Mind boggling. I'm not gaslighting that team next summer. I'm sorry. That's we're not even talking about them on this podcast. They're out of the league. We have 30 teams going into next season. I, I Patrick Kane. So the tie in, of course, with the Buffalo Sabres, him being from that area, but uh, banged up. Tough to see. I think the good news here, the positive thing doesn't sound like a hip injury. Right. But still Detroit losing him. And uh, slowly but surely to the wings making ground, Pete, in the Eastern Conference standings. I know I was all over them. When they got Kane and they're losing and losing and losing, they're turning it back the other direction. And uh, I'm also looking forward to the Alex Lyon revenge game on Thursday, returning to Sunrise. I might be on Detroit in that game, by the way. I, I mean, Detroit's depth is is pretty strong. They've they've had a lot of some no name guys, Rasmussen, David Perron, back from that suspension. Of course, he's been picking up some assists lately. Keep an eye on him in the props market. JT Comfer's healthy. Daniel Sprong, I've liked all along. So. All of a sudden you see, you know, they are a three or four line team. You know, hopefully they could survive any absence by Patrick Kane, but they are still in great position to make the playoffs if they right the ship at the right time and get healthy at the right time. So um, that's to their credit this year. They've been a nice surprise. Yeah, and I, I mean, lucky for them, Toronto's taken a step back this season. So is the Tampa Bay Lightning. So there's opportunity at the very least in that division to move up, whether it be, uh, you know, from wild card standpoint or from just being in that division standpoint. Um, when looking at Patrick Kane, some internal replacement options, Robbie Fabry and Daniel Sprong. Externally, uh, Ellie Tolvanen, he brought up earlier on, six points in the last seven. Gabe Velarde with Winnipeg, Morgan Geeky. With the Boston Bruins, I also wanted to bring up some injury concerns, goaltending wise, death taxes, and Pyotr Kochekov getting in. Like, the, uh, dude, I, I just goaltending in the NA, we need, we need a summit or something. There's just way too many in, injuries, but it's tough to see Kochekov go down. They have zero trust, by the way, in in, in Anti Ranta. Like, they have zero, and I think Carolina's in trouble. Wouldn't be shocked if they pick up a goalie or something. But I think if you want to get to those depths, that level. It's Ronta who you'd pick up, but I like the external options a bit more. Joey Decord, Sam Harrison, UPL in Buffalo right now, and Alex Lyon. How do you feel about that uh, Kachekov situation, Pete? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, the the Hurricanes are putting together a nice little stretch uh, over the past month or so, and then you know an injury hits like that with him in concussion protocol. So hopefully he's he's back relatively soon. Hopefully at some point this season, Freddie Anderson comes back. Um, yeah. I, I don't know how positive that situation is right now we, but we hope he has a full recovery and can start playing again because that would really bolster the the goaltending even if it's just for the regular season and Kachetkov's the guy in the playoffs but they need Freddie back at some point because at least they had three good options so you know Ronto will try to hold down the fort here like he has many times before 
Yeah, delivered by our good friends over at Skip. We had uh, a few different cu- questions about Carolina's crease. Um, unfortunately, not really much of an update on Kochekov, just an mm-hmm. upper body injury is what we're hearing. And um, Freddie Anderson, somebody asked about that holding on him. I, I think that's the best way to approach it. Like, I think fingers crossed they're hoping Anderson's going to come back. And you wonder to that point what that could mean for the value of a Kochekov. But certainly in this type of league, Pete, where it's like a tandem everywhere you look, I wouldn't be stunned if Carolina... Um, employ something like that, you know, if and when those two guys are back healthy together and then they move on from Ronta probably, right? Yeah, I think that Kachetkov has, you know, solidified himself as the goalie of the future, whereas like a couple of, you know, a couple of months ago, remember they were doing some weird things and the Halak PTO and like some of this wacky (laughs) stuff, like despite guys being injured where you like weren't sold that they were committed to Kachetkov, whereas now I feel like he's proven himself. So yeah, I'm excited about his future this season and especially beyond in keeper and dynasty leagues. He's a top five goalie and keeper in dynasty leagues and might even be creeping a little higher than that um, based on his finish this year. They do not believe again in anti Ronta. So Carolina is feeling it right now. Bob, why do we look at the schedule this week? You want to do that? You know, I love the schedule. Look. Trying to get it sponsored by someone. Let's do uh, the schedule look brought to you by Fanatics. The best apparel is at Fanatics. I like it. If you if you can pull something for an all-star game jersey, would love that as well. So maybe just uh, work on that over the next little while and we'll be good here. Okay. I got you. What's your size? What's your size? You're like a large, right? You're a large. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Okay. You know, All right. maybe like yeah. at the gold muzzy beer belly. in the back there too. Okay. All right. I'll take care of you. Go All ahead. right. The schedule, uh, 53 games in total. Of course, MLK Junior Day on Monday. So it was a busy slate. 10 games. You got eight on Tuesday, three Wednesday, 10 Thursday, four Friday, 12 on Saturday, six Sunday, total of 53 again. The four game teams, Anaheim, Colorado, Dallas, LA, Minnesota, Jersey, the Islanders, Rangers, Ottawa, Philadelphia, Seattle, and Toronto, 12 different four game teams and uh, the two game teams, Columbus, Pittsburgh and Winnipeg. So it stinks to see Winnipeg not playing, especially if you own like Connor Hellebuck. Like I was thinking, man, like the, the Vesna race is going to be mighty, mighty intriguing. You got obviously uh, a guy like Connor Hellebuck, you got Thatcher Demko and um, you know, some great stories around the league goaltending wise. And it just always seems that way, you know, in, in the month of November, P when we talk about goalie can't make a save, it's refreshing when we're in like mid January and guys are making saves. Now it's great to see. And some of the surprises are sticking here, right? Like Connor yep. Ingram has five shutouts great. this season. It's a yep. great story. And uh, I wanted to mention the Coyotes a little bit. Obviously, a competitive team, whether home or road, and a deep team at that. Like, I wanted to mention some of these guys. Nick Bukestad's had a crazy hot week. He had a hat trick the other day. Jack McBain has been elevated to the top line yep. with Schmaltz and Keller. Had two apples the other day against Calgary or no against Minnesota so I think and they got Calgary coming up in their next game uh, so that's why I said that but yeah I think that like they're just a sneaky team that you could hit in different spots in DFS and and especially the props market nobody really thinks about those secondary guys but they've been very productive all season long let's talk spots here we got the NHL action collab coming back on Wednesday with our guy Tim Kalinowski can't wait for that but a couple spots I like obviously I threw the sledgehammer word out there I I hope I don't pay for that I like the Leafs on Tuesday and I like the over Colorado and Ottawa over I think that's hit they've hit that in five straight meetings and I would anticipate a very angry Colorado team after they lost to Montreal and Ottawa they defensively they're a work in progress so those are my two looks for Tuesday I think one of the fishiest lines that I've seen in a long time, and I understand why, is is Colorado just a short favorite against Ottawa at home. Colorado played uh, Saturday. They played Monday, and now they're playing Three Tuesday. Yeah. Um, God, I can't believe it. Uh, maybe a shekel on Ottawa just based on the, the price, okay. a little fishy, and uh, at home in Colorado, what is it, you know, third game in four nights or so. Other than that, not seeing much, Nick and Peter. What do you got, Pete? Um, I mean, I, I mentioned that spot on Wednesday for Buffalo to keep it rolling against the Blackhawks without Bedard. I like the Jets today. I like um, the Stars with Ottinger back. Um, they're playing the Kings. Kings are always dangerous on the road. So even if you're getting down on the Kings uh, based on their recent track record, uh, don't overlook that team. But the, the number is not big enough. Um, just, you know, plus 114 I'm seeing So on the Kings. So I'll go uh, with Dallas. I think they're going to go on a run here. And then, yeah, the Coyotes, like they're playing at Calgary, but 
I just I like I like the play of Ingram. Like when he's in net, just make sure he's in net because Vamelka has been like a different uh, animal this season. But I really like Ingram when he's playing, regardless of opponent, regardless of home or road. Uh, I want to just add too. I like New Jersey on uh, Wednesday against Montreal, and uh, I talked about that Alex Lyon revenge game plus one and a half. I would look at Detroit to keep it close. I think Florida won so many games in a row. Maybe they go back the other direction just a tad. So uh, many thanks to producer Bob Bender for Pete Jensen. I'm Nick Alberga. You've been listening to NHL Fantasy on Ice Delivered by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL.